Hello, Betty. Hey, nice to be here. Hmm. So, I went to one of your workshops, a short workshop, like an introductory online workshop, where you taught what you called the wheel of consent. Yes. And I'm curious if it would be possible for you to start by sharing just a little bit about your work. And if you want to, how, how did you come up with that? Like, how was that important for you? Ah, that's a great question. I worked for 30 years as a chiropractor. And then I retired from that practice. And because I had been on a journey of my own erotic exploring, I decided I wanted to offer that to other people. And so I closed my chiropractic office, moved to the city and opened a new studio. And I started, people, started seeing people as a sex coach and a sex worker. And that means I had my hands on many, many people mm. and many people had their hands on me and, and I was coaching them in how to show up, how to um, attend to their sensation, how to notice what they want, what they didn't want, how to communicate that, how to touch with quality, how to play. It really was not about sex as much as it was about all these other things, which are more important really mm -hmm. and part of what determines what sex you can have because if you can't relax and you can't notice what you feel and you can't communicate it then it's not going to be very good anyway so so that's what I was coaching and along in those years that I was exploring um, I took a workshop I took many workshops but one of them I took was called power surrender and intimacy. It was with the body electric school. And we played a game called the three minute game. And the three minute game is two people ask each other these two questions. And the two questions are, what do you want me to do to you for three minutes? And the other question is, what do you want to do to me for three minutes? And that was a lot of fun. It's like, mm. oh yeah, I can think of lots of things. And so I, I started using that with my clients as a way to transition from the talking history taking part of the session to the hands-on part of the session. Because I figured, well, it will give me a sense of how comfortable they are with touch, what kind of skills they have, both touching and being touched and And it turned out that it showed me that and showed me very much more. And um, later I, I, I noticed that the question was a little too broad for what I was teaching. So I narrowed the questions to how do you want me to touch you for three minutes? And how do you want to touch me for three minutes? And then I found out where everybody was getting stuck and where they were getting lost and where they were confused and where they were shamed. And, mm. um, and, we, and, and I noticed it's all of us and I noticed it's me too. That um, you know, if, you're, if you work with people and you're honest with yourself about it, you're gonna notice that you have the same issues as the people walking in the door. Um, so the wheel of consent is a diagram of what happens when two people ask each other those two questions. And that's all it is. So you'll notice that if I'm asking you, how do you want me to touch you? And how do you want to touch me? And you're asking me those things, then we're gonna, we're gonna have four different interactions. And each one of them, you're either doing or being done to. Mm. And each one of them, it's either for you or for me. And so those four overlap and combine and you have four quadrants. And that was obvious pretty immediately that, oh, these four things and they're different. And look, they combine in this way. That was obvious pretty immediately. And then as I kept going with it, then I just kept noticing more and more that each of them has a particular way that it will challenge you, 
a different way that it will liberate you, a different way that it will turn you on, or a different way that it will scare you, or a different way that it's fun. Um, so then I just dove in and it, I, it became, wow. became everything. Um, and, and I also learned that it's best as a practice. So it's what it is, it's a practice in taking, receiving and giving a gift apart. So that when I'm giving to you a gift, it's all about you. And I am taking what I want, put it on the shelf for now. Mm. I still respect my own limits, but it's for you. And when you're giving me a gift, it's for me. You take what you prefer, you put it on the shelf and you still respect your boundaries and limits. So that when you take them apart by taking turns, you have experiences that are possible no other way. Mm. When it's my turn and it's all about me and I'm not giving anything back, holy shit. Then I get to feel vulnerable and I, all my unworthiness stuff comes up and all my fears come up and my doubts and my shame and blah, blah, everything else. And when I'm giving to you, it's all about you. Then I have other different feelings that come up, you know, mm. or maybe I want you to react a certain way so that I can feel good about myself or make, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm. So it's a practice in taking, receiving and giving apart and noticing that who is doing is a different question than who it's for. And that's the part that the wheel of consent really brings into the consent conversation. Oh, yeah. yeah. That who is doing is a different question than who it's for. Mm. Um, I can be touching you for you, or I can be touching you for me. Mm. And it's a very different experience for both of us. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's the, that's the wheel of consent. Um, and that's what's kept me busy for the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm so happy that you're doing this work and I'm touched. I, like when you were speaking, I noticed sometimes tears coming up and so many memories. And I really appreciate you for the last thing you mentioned. Then I'm thinking back about times when I imagined, well, if I give somebody a massage, they have to like it. Yes, oh God, I exactly. wish. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But it yes. was just for me to touch somebody's shoulders. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so often we do that. We, you know, someone's touching me and I think, well, they're doing it. So I guess it's supposed to be for me. So that mm. means I'm supposed to like it. And what if I don't like it? Well, I need to change myself to like it better. You know? I've been there, you know, most people have been there, I think. Oof. And so that's a real mess. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was for me such a big thing that stood out when we were doing the work together is who is this for? My yeah. God, I remember thinking back <laughs> yeah. situations that are not necessarily connected to touch when I was with my partner, like when I was 18, I said, shouldn't we go to the mall? And I thought I'm doing her a favor. And yeah. she said, yeah, maybe. And then we both ended up in the mall and nobody wanted to be there. And I thought, yes. I, I, yeah. yes. <laughs> but, I had um, the exact same thing with a partner of mine. We ended up taking a, a trip to another city, staying in a hotel and everything. And it's like, I don't want to be. I, we're here because you want to be here. No, we're here because you want to be here. Neither of us wanted to be there. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. From my, from my experience, uh, though, there is some, it is a little bit cushioning to have these indirect requests. You know? Then uh, from mm -hmm. my experience, if, if I would ask a direct question and say that's for me, it takes some courage. Uh, no. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it takes some courage and it's a, it's a certain kind of honesty, isn't it? Because, oops, here, there we go. 
it's a certain kind of honesty because mm -hmm. you now admit that this is something that you want. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It's not vulnerable because there's something wrong with you. It's inherently vulnerable to ask for what you want. And so, yeah, it can be hard. For me, I come from a background of be of priding myself and having no wants. So ah, I, right. I come from that kind of background that my like my in my early education I was told to not have any wants. Yeah. For me, I had a difficult time even on like realizing that that's something that I want for myself. So. Yes. I imagine this whole practice, it needs some kind of awareness though. Like, what do I actually want? And is there something that you could say if somebody is really not aware of their wants, like some little tool or practice to become more aware what's actually for me important? Mm, that's a great question. Well, in the practice of the wheel of consent, you ask each other, mm. How do you want to touch me for three minutes? How do you want me to touch you for three minutes? Or however long you want. It doesn't have to be three minutes. But it helps to start with something small and simple. It's not like, you know, what do you want with your life? Or what do you want for the rest of the week? Or, mm. you know, how, what do you want of this relationship? It's, that's too mm. big of a question. It's how do you want me to touch you right now for one minute? And as scary as that is, it's answerable. Um, and, and you're right, a lot of times we don't know. And that's not a problem. Mm. Why would that be a problem? Mm. It's only a problem if you're in a hurry to get going. If you're not in a hurry, it's not a problem. Well, I don't know yet hold on a minute and I'll, it'll come to me oh, and wow. you just wait and wait until it comes and it will come mm -hmm. it may take a while if it, if it takes two minutes it feels like it's forever because it's so awkward but it's just a couple minutes it will turn up mm -hmm. yeah but we think I don't know why we think we're in a hurry. We have to get going. Well, I guess it's because we don't want to feel awkward. Mm. Yeah. A lot of gold in there for me. I, I <laughs> that you, you speak so much to me, and I'm 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 still sad thinking back about like how much I just didn't ask directly for things I wanted or didn't have any awareness or presented things at, like that I wanted as if they were beneficial for the other person. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking the other person yeah. has to thank me now. <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. I'm yeah. small things too for me. I'm thinking about yeah. situations like where I ask, wouldn't it be nice to go to the park? And for me, it's hard though to hear like if I ask a direct question, I would likely hear a direct yes or no. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm. Exactly. So how would you deal with hearing a no? Just you mentioned the word noticing. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm connecting in my mind now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we noticing is the right word, I think, for noticing what we want because we know in there somewhere it just has to bubble up to our cortex you know so i don't think it's a matter of deciding what you want or figure out what you want or you know it's just noticing because it's already there mm. but hearing a no yeah sometimes it's hard sometimes mm. it's not and sometimes it's really hard to hear yeah. no. And I don't know of any cure for that. It's just hard sometimes. Yeah. 
remembering on the on the weekend we spent together in the workshop i remember you were doing a little demonstration of all of this that would be possible online and i'm yeah i would love to play that with you or like ha have this demonstration live <laughs> is that okay. something yeah 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 okay do you want to ask me or do you want me to ask you first <laughs> that's <so good. laughs> I, <laughs> Uh, yeah. I would want you to ask me first. Okay. Would you okay. do that? Yeah. Mm. So here, I don't remember how we did it in the class, but what I would suggest here is to just act like we're going to touch and then obviously we can't, but then we can mm. experience the question. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can do this without touch, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, so Marvin, how would you like me to touch you for a couple minutes? Mm -hmm. Well, just hearing the question, I actually noticed some tingling here. And I would like for you to touch my head and just move with your hand over my head. Okay. Would you would you do that for me? Would you it be something you would do? Now I'm going to pause and consider is that something that I can give with a full heart? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. No. Ah. <laughs> That makes me so happy. I'm, I'm like, I'm like so touched by this almost, and I feel, I feel all these sensations. Yeah. Mm. So then, now, if we would continue this, then I imagine I would ask. And you, then you, would, you, would. you first you would say thank you. Ah, th thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. And then you ask me the question. So, Betty, is there a way in which you would like me to touch you, or, or how you would like to be touched by me? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yes, I would like to lean my head against your chest and have you um, scratch my the back of my neck up into the at bottom, the edge of my hair. Like this, I'm doing it to myself now. Will you do that? Yes, I will. I will. Mm. <laughs> scratch, scratch. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Now, what didn't come up, um, it, which it would be good to mention, is that you might say um, it might be a no, which is fine, or it might be um, I, I'm, I'm happy to scratch your neck, but I don't want your head on my chest. Or it might be I'm happy to scratch your neck, but I don't have much fingernails. Mm. Or it might be I can do it if you turn this way so that I can stay sitting down. Or Yes, I can do that for just a couple minutes, but not longer. Mm. So you have a limit to what you are willing to give. And it didn't come up here, but it could. Yeah. And I just want to say, I really love the process of just pausing and actually just taking a minute to say, I'm going to see. Mm -hmm. There's like so much movement and yeah. it's like a really... Yeah. Like vulnerable, if I would call it this way, for me, like a vulnerable process. It's really beautiful. Yes. And 
Yeah. And I'm actually sad thinking about all the times that I did not know about this in life. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yes, the pauses are really important. Okay, the next question is, how do you want to touch me? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually just want to speak about the process. Just hearing the question, I have some like immediate reaction. <laughs> Hmm. What do you notice? I notice my chest and my lips, my mouth, I, I would say, get a bit more dry than before. Hmm. And I feel my left hand, some what I would call like aliveness in my hand here. Hmm. And if I look at you on the screen, I get curious in your hair. And I imagine, I don't know which side it is, that there's like this, I don't know how you call it even, I, the other side. Like, yeah, this, I, I am curious in that and I would like to touch your hair there and I wouldn't okay. put it, I would probably just like put my hand underneath and have the hair run through here and then maybe do a little bit of like a mild head massage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what was the question that you may asked me? I, may I touch your hair and head with my hand gently? Yes, yes. But mm. no massage. This is where this question is difficult because you're touching me, but it's for you. And by adding a little massage, you made it about me. Mm. Mm. Can you hear that? Yeah, I think I think I think and so. Every, everybody does this. It's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It feels like being back in school almost. I'm almost. <laughs> it's it's a it's a can be a very confusing question, and many people trip over this because we're so trained that. If I'm going to touch you, I have to make it pleasant for you. Yeah, totally and what I that's thought. My, that's what I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is an ex experiment in, can I touch you only for me? I respect your limits, of course, and I'm not going to try to hurt you, but it's for my enjoyment only and not think about yours. And it's very difficult often. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And yes, you can play with my hair. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. Something here, uh, like a relaxation. Yeah. And you're welcome. So the next question I imagine would be that I ask you how you would like to touch me. Yes. <sighs> All right. So Betty, how uh, is there a way you would like to touch me? And if so, how? Yes. May I run my hands, in, my fingers in your whiskers and both these whiskers and your uh, mustache whiskers. Yeah. <laughs> I like here. I enjoy this. So, so I say yes to here and I say no to this part here, right here. Mm. And here, yes. Great. That's a great example of having a limit yeah mm. Mm. okay <laughs> <laughs> and you get to notice it's not about you i don't really care if you like it or not but i care very much if it's okay with you 
And there and there's a big difference between those two. Mm. I'm not doing it for your enjoyment, but if you do enjoy it, great. I don't really care. Yeah. Because it's for me. And this is the gift. This is an example of a gift that you're giving me is giving me access to you. It's like you're allowing me to come fill you up. And so that's a gift from you to me. So I say thank you. I say you're welcome. <laughs> so like one thing that comes to me now after after we were playing this and I really I really appreciate you for being here again. I I, lear I imagine I learned so much and I, I appreciate you for doing this demonstration. And like a thing that just came to me if we as humans have some yeah, we have practiced this and we have some awareness. I imagine though it is also in our responsibility to check in if somebody doesn't have the ability to set a boundary. I think that is a, that is a problematic thing that if somebody doesn't have the ability to say no, then I imagine it takes some really good noticing on my side to be seeing if something might be... Yes. Actually, a no, but it seems, but it's like a spoken yes. No. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I, I think that if you, if you have more skill, consent skill in an interaction or in a relationship, then it's up to you to use that skill. So if you have the skill to notice, oh, mm. this person said yes with their mouth, but they look tense or they're they're holding their breath or they've mm -hmm. stopped if you have the skill to notice that then you should use that skill yes yeah you know? uh, um yeah and we were we will all make mistakes at times mm. so that's true I'm so happy you said it. I'm thinking back I used to study international business and like we have the terms there that if that silence means agreement. That is something that is like still pretty popular <laughs> in business. And that's, I think, the worst thing that you can assume uh, in like actually like human to human relationships. Yeah. No? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I can see why it might be in business, but in person to person, I would say silence means a no. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Maybe that explains a lot. <laughs> oh. Well, oh, God. I imagine there's so much more to explore. And I'm curious about one question, Mary. I know yes. that you once have visited a radical honesty workshop. And I imagine just by knowing the people who watch my stuff that some of them will probably know radical honesty. And I imagine some might be curious what you think. <laughs> yeah so great would you be willing to share just a little bit about it and feel free to include things that you don't like yeah great i i have been to a a, a small two-hour thing many many years ago and then i was at a six-day intensive with brad a couple of times a few years ago and then a couple years ago and I love it. I love, in particular, I love the emphasis on paying attention to what's happening in your body. And even as I say that, I can feel my heartbeat and my, like, my getting warm here, you know, because our, and my legs are tingling. <laughs> this is great. Because I imagine that what, what I'm really avoiding is my feelings like if i'm avoiding saying something that's true or hiding something it's only my feelings that i'm trying to avoid mm. and so um i really appreciate the emphasis on that mm. um, i appreciate the emphasis on cleaning up unfinished business um, of which i still have a good bit yeah. mm. Um, the part that I 
question. Yeah, let me just breathe. Ah, and I appreciate this sense of fun that happens at those retreats. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the, the hanging out with people and the banter. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Mm. The one question that I have, which I never really pushed on to answer is if I'm trying to have a, a finishing conversation with someone and they don't want to hear it, mm -hmm. then where is the consent there? And if I'm wanting to have this conversation, then it's for me. And if that's not a gift that they're willing to give me, then I don't, I don't feel right about just keeping going and keeping talking to them. Mm. Um, and I imagine that if it was important enough, I would pursue the question and I haven't really pursued the question. Um, but it's the, it's the one question that remains with me about it, about the whole process. No, thank you for sharing that. I, I really appreciate you for that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. Mm. So I imagine. And would I go back again to another? What would, would I go back again to another intensive? Yeah, I probably would. I want to give you some space for some like final closing words that you might want to bring in the world. And I want to say you also just recently published a book. Is yes. that correct? Yes, please go check out my book. It's, uh, it's called The Art of Receiving and Giving, The Wheel of Consent. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my helper on that book was Robin Dawson, who has also been to a couple of... Um, retreats and you can get a free chapter at wheel of consent dot book wheel of consent book dot com um, and you if you go there those are there's you can get a free chapter you can buy the book you can link to my website and there's lots of free videos there's a lot of free information online and the school of consent Dot org is where the classes are. So I mostly train other practitioners and there's other classes going on online all over the world um, with other teachers who are really good. Mm. So that's at schoolofconsent.org and wheel of consent book. I will, I will absolutely put those links under the video. Like Great wherever whoever sees this video now on whatever platform just look underneath there will be <laughs> there will be the links yeah. that he just mentioned yeah. Mm. yeah yeah thank you well mm. it's thank been you. a pleasure talking yeah. with you thank you very much i i appreciate you and i got so much out of this and thanks i was happy you are welcome. Thank you for having me.